Graduates and guests, you may be seated. My name is Sarah Garris, and I am one of your class valedictorians and senior class representative. Today, I have been given the honor of reciting our school verse. Isaiah 40, 31 reads, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Thank you.
Good morning. My name is Madison Porter, and I'm one of the valedictorians in the class of 2022. Please bow your heads and join me in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for giving all the seniors who are graduating this morning the strength to make it through these four years. Although it was rigorous, we made it due to not only you, Lord, but the family members, friends, and faculty who helped us throughout it all. We ask that you continue to give us perseverance as we make our next steps into our new lives at college. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to attend the special school BCHS is and to have created all the memories we now have. In Jesus' name, amen. My name is Sarah Chiu, and I am one of your class valedictorians, as well as the senior class vice president. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Salute Pledge. The time is finally here. It's that time that we recognize the accomplishments of Bakersfield Christian High School's class of 2022 and to celebrate with them their well-earned graduation. My name is John Buto. I'm privileged to serve as BCHS's president. And on behalf of our school's board, our administration, our faculty and staff, please let me welcome each of you to the class of 2022's graduation exercise. We thank you for being in attendance. You'll notice that throughout this ceremony, an intentional intertwining of the academic and the Christian faith. This intertwining is extremely intentional. We're a rigorous academic institution preparing our students for success in this world. We're also a campus which day in and day out proclaims Christ as Savior, and teaches the unmistakable truths which such a proclamation entails. In this way, we prepare our students for eternity. We trust you will see and hear both the academic and Christian emphases of our school today, just as it should be. While you were waiting for the start of the ceremony, it's likely you looked through the program. You will have noticed that there is not a typical graduation keynote speaker, and you saw that correctly. What you may have seen instead is that there are five valedictorian speakers. You saw that correctly, five. An explanation. This is the second year after which we changed our criteria for naming a valedictorian. Rather than having the title of valedictorian being an academic competition between students we instead have set a bar to which we aspire our students to aim. The bar is ridiculously high. Students must achieve a cumulative 4.51 grade point average or better. Basically, students receive approximately 56 semester grades while at BCHS. Seven classes a semester, two semesters in a year, that's 14. 14 a year times four is 56. Out of these 56 semesters, 26 semesters for our valedictorians must be in honors, AP, or in dual enrollment classes, and they must receive no more than one B their entire career in a semester of BCHS. That means our valedictorians have received at least 55 out of 56 semester grades of an A. Absolutely amazing. We have 18 valedictorians that met that mark this year. Let's give them a hand. Of these 18 valedictorians, the five valedictorian speakers you will hear were chosen from among those having submitted speeches. They are very deserving of this opportunity to speak. For those of you keeping score, and I know some of you do, 
the total amount of time our five valedictorians will be speaking will be about the same as if we had a traditional keynote address. We sit on a Sunday afternoon, we watch football for three hours at a time on a weekly basis. We certainly can give a fraction of that time once in a student's life to celebrate high school graduation. Sit back and enjoy the wonderful words our students have to say. Finally, there are a multitude of emotions being held by you graduates today and coincidentally also by your parents and by others in attendance. For many of you, there's a feeling of pure joy. For others, a very real apprehension. I know for many, there's an unmistakable sadness in realizing that your BCHS experience has indeed come to an end. Perhaps you feel relief. All of these emotions are perfectly normal. It's part of turning the page to the next chapter in one's life. Know that the BCHS community loves you and that we are here for you, not only today and tomorrow, but for the years ahead. Never hesitate to let any of us know how we can support you. And know that you will continue to be unceasingly in our prayers. We're thankful for the wonderful blessings you've been and brought to our campus over these past four years. God's blessings to you, 135 students in the class of 2022. It's our privilege to celebrate you. And now I would like to call forward Fallon Butcher, who is our Eagle of the Year. Fallon, come on up. All right, good morning, everyone, and thank you all for coming. My name is Fallon Butcher, and I am your 2022 Eagle of the Year. I <laughs> I would like to begin by sharing with you Ecclesiastes 3.1, which says, For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. Seasons are considered symbolic in literature. Summer usually representing happiness, liveliness, and freedom, and winter representing gloom, darkness, and death. I'm sure we have all had that moment when we were fixated on the idea that when we are older, we will always live in summer. Each of us has had a winter, those winters that come with no, more, no warning, the ones that come at the most inopportune time, when we were inundated with worry and fear and anxiety, feeling like we're giving and giving and getting nothing in return. And yet we're still called to do the next right thing. One of my favorite sayings in the theater is that 90% of acting is reacting. And I think that that applies to our everyday lives too. We do not have control over everything that happens to us, but what season comes next, but we do have control over how we respond. A winter may be approaching some of us. We may be in a winter now where it seems like there is no end in sight. No matter what season you're in now, don't succumb to those winters, but easier said than done. There are some of us that have gone through indescribable, unfathomable winters where some of us question if there is really a loving God, if a God even exists. I know of a girl, she grew up in a Christian household and would pray with her family every night, being taught that God was a God of love and hearing all the miracles God did in the Bible, she decided at about the age of six, she would pray that God would take away her food allergies. She had six of them and she would go to countless birthday parties, family celebrations, banquets, and she would be left out with only fruit salads and veggie platters or the food she brought from home. So she prayed every day for weeks that God would take away these food allergies. By the time she became a teenager, she developed two more. She also had asthma, where she'd always have to make sure to use her inhaler well in advance before games, or she'd have to call herself off the field because she'd be foaming at the mouth with mucus. She also had eczema, a skin disease where rashes would appear anywhere on her body. She would scratch until there was no skin left. As a teenager, it targeted her fingers. There were times she couldn't type, hold a pencil, or even make a fist. 
why would a loving God, how could a loving God do that to this girl? Well, the world has been broken since the fall of Adam and Eve, but God is also all-powerful. He has the power to heal her. That girl was me. I don't know why, and it hurts physically, mentally, and emotionally, but I do believe wholeheartedly that God is loving because he sent his one and only son to die on the cross in my place so I can spend eternity with him where there will be no more tears and no more pain. Many of us have received an award at some point in our lives. Each one of them had a list of qualifications or requirements in order to earn them. Salvation is different. Salvation is not an award that through good deeds we can achieve. It's a gift we can receive. There technically is a checklist of requirements. Just look at all the laws in the Old Testament that God set in place. But there is not one of us who has ever lived, nor will ever live, that can possibly fulfill all those requirements, except for one, and that is Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. God didn't just create us and dust himself off and say, okay, best of wishes, guys. No. He loved us so much that he gave us the opportunity to have a relationship with him. He sent us his son as the ultimate sacrifice and the Holy Spirit as the ultimate helper so we can always go to him. Even though there has been and will be plenty of doors throughout our lives that we want to open, close, know this for certain. God's love was, is, and always will be an open door. Sometimes it takes a closed door in order to clearly see the open ones. Sometimes they might not even be open yet. He just asks you to knock. Just knock. It may not even open, but it's all part of his ultimate plan. One of my favorite scriptural passages is Philippians 4, 11 to 13, where the Apostle Paul says, Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low and how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Paul found strength in God, not his circumstances, because he knew that God loved him. So as we go off on the paths that God has set before us, remember that no matter what comes your way, no matter how cold that winter gets, Know with all your heart that God is there for you because he loves you. Thank you for your time. Okay, I think that's good. Good morning. My name is Iman Abumari, and I am one of the valedictorians for the class of 2022. I am honored and humbled to be able to speak before you today. Before I begin, I would like to say thank you to the administration, the board, the faculty, friends, and family for joining us today to celebrate our accomplishments. We are so grateful to have you here. I am beginning with a childhood story that seems irrelevant, but I promise you, everything I say today is relevant to some degree. As a child, my mother gave me the prettiest pink razor scooter. I was obsessed, and the next thing I knew, I was scooting about the cul-de-sac. My scooter rides consisted of the same path along the sidewalks. I became so used to each sidewalk that it became a natural reflex to hop off the scooter when there would be a divot in the ground. However, as I went on more scooter rides, I became more confident. With this confidence, I made calculated decisions when it came to my scooter rides. I began to no longer slow down at the bumps. Rather, I approached them with a fast and furious style. Inevitably, I fell off my scooter, scratching my face and chest. I had two options. I could either continue sobbing or I could walk back home and pick up my scooter. I chose the latter of the two. Walking home allowed me to see the error in my ways. Had I sat there sobbing, I would have gained nothing but puffy eyes. I mustered all my inner strength to hobble home to prove to myself that I am capable of helping myself. Essentially, I was exhibiting resilience. Yes, I admit the story is simple, but the message is plain and clear. It is okay to fall, but how you get up is the real test. But what is resilience? I'm sure we have all heard the word countless times, but what really is it? According to the University of California, Los Angeles, resilience is defined as the ability to connect, 
to connect, persevere, and thrive in the face of adversity. Or as my father says, resilience is facing a problem or a difficulty and working hard to overcome it while becoming a master and executing it. There are several definitions, but the common theme is rooted in the response during difficult times. However, I believe resilience is different for everyone. I do not, I do not believe it's an accurate or a productive practice to restrict resilience to a simple definition. I believe that resilience is combating anyone's problems through their individual toolbox. Besides understanding resilience, there are several things within our control that allow us to have a tenacious attitude in the face of adversity. Resilience is not an inherent trait. It is something gained through life experience. We accumulate resilience through each trial and tribulation we face. However, we can harbor mental practices that allow us to fight in the face of adversity rather than flee. To practice resilience, it begins by finding the perfect Goldilocks medium between focusing on the future and pre the present. It is easy when a challenge arises to fixate on the instant ramifications of the problem, and it is also just as easy to fixate on the future anxieties that may arise. There needs to be a rational understanding of what to worry about and when to think in the future or in the present. It is not something instantly developed, as Goldilocks did trying all the porridges until she found the perfect one. Additionally, the it takes a village mentality is a common way to practice resilience. It is okay to need help. We are not expected to be able to conquer every problem that arises on our own. We have to build support systems that come in the form of family, friends, mentor, and God. Life is expected to be filled with challenges. They are simply unavoidable. Resilience is something required for life. One of the most important lessons I have learned during my past four years is that life does not go as planned. In fact, I started high school at a school across town that shall not be named, also known as the other private school, and now I'm concluding my journey here at BCHS. Life will present us with challenges. It does not match the Disney stereotypes. As you can see, the COVID pandemic proved that to us. Life will suck sometimes, for a lack of a better term. We will all face challenges in every stage of our lives. However, each problem we face is not a permanent problem. There are two routes, the one of worrying, achieving nothing, or the one of action, achieving change. Somehow, we will make it out on the other side of a challenge. I can confidently say that every time I have felt like I have failed or that the end of my world was imminent, which was quite often, I was always wrong. I want to take this moment to issue a challenge to all my classmates to get back on their version of the pink scooter that may appear in their next chapter. You will fall in different ways. However, rising up is the only way to persevere and grow. Thank you. Started in 2004, the Founders Award has been presented to individuals who, because of their love for the Lord and for young people, have been instrumental in the founding and development of BCHS. The recipients of this award are giants in the history of our school. With each year we move forward in our school's history, the list of individuals worthy of such recognition simply multiplies. While we gain distance from the year of our founding, those instrumental in our school's ongoing development simply add and add. The vagueness of the term ongoing development associated with this award provides wonderful latitude for recognizing individuals the Lord has brought into our midst who have greatly impacted our ministry. This year's Founders Award recipient is Mrs. Megan Raymond. Megan, can you come forward? Unfortunately, Megan's husband, Randy, could not be with us today. Um, however, her son, Randy, is with us. So welcome back, Randy. And it was 2020, right? Alumnus of the class of 2020. So welcome back, Randy. Megan. All right. So let me talk about you, Megan, for a second. All right. You get to hold this. All right. All right. What a tremendous honor it is to get to recognize you, someone who distinguishes herself as an exemplary model of servant leadership. 
Megan's personal understanding of sacrificial support through prayer and volunteerism has made a lasting impact here at school. This is one of the many reasons why it's with gratefulness we name Megan the recipient of the 2122 BCHS Founders Award. Megan served as a board member of the Eagles Club from 2016 all the way through 2021 in key roles from marketing to merchandising and then ultimately to taking on the presidency. Her leadership kept the club afloat during the 2020 pandemic year. Her countless hours of determination through a challenging time brought in the donations that continue to meet the needs both of our athletic programs and the athletes themselves. Megan prioritizes and generously accommodates the many requests for awards and shirts and every BCHS plaque bears her stamp. We look forward to so many more years of partnering with you, Megan, as we celebrate the achievements of our students. On behalf of the BCHS community, on behalf of our board, it's a privilege to present you with this award with deepest appreciation and with heartfelt admiration as we continue to strive for a goal that you deeply believe in, honoring God and helping students soar. If you want the definition of a class act, this is it. Megan Raymond. Thanks, Megan. Congratulations. <laughs> Randy's giving me a standing act. All right, we continue with our next speech. My pleasure to present Ms. Georgia Anderhold. Good morning. My name is Georgia Anderholt, and it is my honor to be speaking to you today as one of the 2022 Valid Victorians. When reflecting on our class, there are many adjectives that come to mind. Resilient, athletic, and intelligent. intelligent. The word that most frequently comes to mind is competitive. As a class, we have been strongly influenced by the desire as I reflect on our individual accomplishments over the course of the last four years, I realize success looks different for everyone. Choosing a college was not easy for me. My thoughts were clouded by the judgment of my peers. I was embarrassed that my fellow classmates were going to attend top tier universities, whereas I had chosen a different path. My greatest desire in these moments was to impress and prove myself to my peers. I wasn't staying true to the core of who I am. I wasn't thinking for myself. A loved one reminded me that this is my future and no one else's. I needed to listen to what God was pushing me towards. I had to realize this was a personal decision, one that would impact my future. My mom often expresses, you're always gonna be smarter than someone and someone's always gonna be smarter than you. Truer words have never been spoken. Smarter, prettier, funnier, more athletic, you name it. This was an opportunity to become a free thinker, an opportunity to venture outside of the box of what others thought for me and my future. This helped transfer my focus of competition to a focus of introspection. The last four years has helped mold and shape us into the next season of life. No matter what path you have chosen, a four-year institution, a junior college, a year-long sabbatical, or perhaps the armed forces, I trust that you will do this with the grit that God has given you and ready to expand your wings as a competitive eagle. The voices of others will never be out of reach. We will hear much advice, most of which will probably be unsolicited. My hope for each of you is that you listen to that small voice from within. Trust your gut. Be a free thinker. Do not be conformed to the world around you. Make decisions for yourself and avoid believing everything people tell you. My grandfather would refer to these actions as showing unconventional wisdom. This will not come easily. It will take practice and patience, but is achievable in the end. As we take our first steps into adulthood, we need to remember our core. BCHS has taught us values, how to think for ourselves, and thanks to Mr. Sabalka and Mr. Vizcara, a biblical worldview. 
the next season of life will prove to be one of the first great tests of our life. We will no longer be surrounded by God-fearing students and teachers who want to see us further our relationship with Christ. We now enter the real world, a world that rejects Christ as our Savior. As Christians, we must hold fast to our strong beliefs and not be swayed by the differing views surrounding us. A, voice to, a verse to hold near is Romans 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. My fellow classmates, our lives will inevitably change as we step into tomorrow. My prayer for each of you is that you have this unconventional wisdom. You have this rare out-of-the-box thinking. Hold strong to your core and do not let those around you influence your thoughts. Think for yourself. Thank you. Friends, family, and faculty, my name is Jillian Andreessen, and I'm one of this year's valedictorians for this graduating class. The topic that I was assigned to speak to you about today was titled, Starting Now. You see, the ironic part about this speech, though, is that I waited till the very last minute to write it. Not because of procrastination or laziness, but rather overthinking. I stared, and I mean I stared at the computer for hours on end, trying to not only comprehend a deeper meaning behind this topic, but also write something that would be worth your guys' time as an audience. So with that being said, I'm not going to stand up here before you all to tell you to join a club or to make lots of friends, because those topics, while they are helpful, are not going to serve you in the most authentic way as you navigate so many new norms after high school. Instead, I'm going to speak to you about the two most important strategy that have brought me success not only in high school, but also previously throughout my life. The reality is that we are not in high school anymore. We have entered the real world. By entering the real world, each graduate has an opportunity to start now and forge a path for themselves. Jim Carrey, a comedian, once said, so many of us choose our path out of fear disguised as practicality. You can fail at what you don't want, so you might as well take a chance at doing what you love. First, if you have a passion or a talent that brings you joy, pursue it. It's a gift from God. Oftentimes, it is easy to feel less than satisfactory because our passions do not meet the societal norms of what classify as a successful path. However, all successful paths came about by an, an individual who chose to take a chance. All successful individuals came about by those who silenced the opinions of naysayers and instead chose grit every day at your craft in some way to sharpen your knowledge by changing your mindset on how you perceive other people's perceptions of what defines you. Start now by showing up for yourself every chance you get. And most importantly, start now by using your gifts to bring honor to God's name in whatever way possible. I promise you that if you do these things relentlessly, pursuing your passions will reap its rewards. My final piece of advice for taking initiative is what I consider to be the most important piece of advice that anybody could ever give you. So listen up. Start reflecting Christ in your actions now. Not in five minutes, not in five hours, not tomorrow, not in five years, and not when it's most convenient to do. Do it now. Outwardly behavior reflects inward belief. When you find a parallel between what you think and what you do, your actions will have more power and intent behind them. The way you act reflects your love for Christ. As Christians, our standard has already been set. With this, it is our job to set the standard for the rest of the world who do not know Christ. If we as Christians do not set this standard, somebody else will. 
1 Timothy 4 verse 12 states, Don't let anybody look down on you because you are young, but set the examples for believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Start now by graciously serving others every chance you get. Start now by showing up to church. Start now by defending the contents of the Bibles with what you say and how you act. And start now by seeking out God through prayer during not only the bad times, but also the good. BCHS has blessed us by equipping us with the tools to carry out these actions in the real world. However, when the going gets tough and the world strikes back like it does, it takes a personal love for God to uphold Christ's standards. If you choose to live your life for Christ today, I promise you that an overwhelming amount of peace and power will flood your soul. Starting now starts with you. Who you choose to be in this very moment could greatly influence who, are you going, who, you are, who you will be in the future. So you need to make that decision for yourself now because it'll greatly benefit you in the future. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Sydney Crary, and I am one of the valedictorians of the class of 2022 and the ASB vice president. It is a long-standing tradition that the exiting class leaves a gift to the school. This year's class seeks to repair and upgrade the school's main flagpoles in front of the administration building with in-ground LED lighting. The class of 2022 will leave BCHS with the illumination that will prevent our symbol of freedom and liberty from being enveloped in darkness. Thank you. Hi, my name is Shushti Chajlani, and I am one of the valedictorians for the class of 2022. As I stand up here today, it dawned on me. We are at the edge of our futures. It's not the distant reality we thought it was freshman year. It begins here, and it begins today. We've completed an education that will serve as the platform we use to launch ourselves into our futures. When Mr. Chai told me that I'd be writing a speech about shooting for the stars, I had to pause and think about what that truly meant. Does shooting for the stars mean not being afraid to go after what we want in life? Does it mean persevering through the challenges we face and dreaming big despite the obstacles in our way? Or does it mean developing our passions and turning them into actions? As I thought about my journey to this day and even my friends' journeys, I realized shooting for the stars meant all of these things. We've all had different paths to this very moment, but each of us have been given the tools and the support to shoot for the stars. Whether it be playing devil's advocate in Mr. Ward's class, arguing about the significance of a piece of literature in Mr. Yoon's, or staring at the board in Mrs. Belden's, trying to understand what on earth Vesper theory is. <laughs> Every opportunity we were presented with to challenge ourselves and our capabilities opened our minds to expanding our perspectives. Don't diminish the everyday experiences because they were all accomplishments. Shooting for the stars doesn't have to mean being the biggest, showiest person in the room. It can be showing up that day, learning, opening your minds, and just putting a smile on each other's faces. The school has set us up to succeed despite the unfamiliarities our futures hold. So don't be afraid. As we reach for the stars, there is one more personal milestone we must encompass. We have to believe in ourselves. Being here today, ready to receive our diplomas, it is clear that we all have the capabilities. Now we must believe. We are our biggest enemy. 
When we decide we can't do it and lock ourselves away from the world, we shut the door to becoming the person we aspire to be. So open yourself up and continue believing in yourself. I challenge you all to take everything you've learned from every experience, conversation, and lesson in high school and take it with you into your futures. The universe is infinite, so reach for the stars and continue reaching. I can stand before you right now and say that after four years, I'm ready to shoot for the stars. But that wasn't always the case. I entered BCHS in the middle of the school year and I really struggled. I was resistant to the change and I rejected the help I was offered. But despite my wanting to just hide away in the corner, the teachers and administration never gave up on me. I remember just a couple of days into entering BCHS, I was called down to Mr. Buto's office. I thought, great, not even a weekend, and I'm already somehow in trouble. But I couldn't have been more wrong. The president of the school had called me in because he wanted to understand who I was as a student and what I sought after in life. He wanted to learn about my goals and aspirations in hopes of ensuring I'm given every opportunity possible to reach for those goals. I have always had big aspirations for myself, but I struggled to see clearly and turn my passion into action. The school saw that flame within me and taught me to fo stop focusing on the adversities ahead and just believe in myself. It was through the endless support of the faculty that I realized everything the school was and everything it had taught me. It was an institute full of love, kindness, and support. And it helped me become the person I am standing before you today. We must shoot for the stars because when we decide to start believing and start reaching, the people around us will see that. They will see the flame within us. They will support us and they will embrace us with love, just as the faculty did for me here. Sometimes all you need is a little nudge in the right direction. So here's my nudge to you guys. Dream big, believe in yourself, and shoot for the stars. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Michaela Bedard. I am one of these, this year's valedictorians and the ASB president. I'm so excited and privileged to be speaking to you all today. Thomas Edison once said, I have not failed. I have just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Albert Einstein said, you never fail until you stop trying. Winston Churchill believed, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Class of 22. As we graduate from high school and enter this new stage in our life, do not be afraid to fail. Failure is inevitable, and we should expect it, accept it, and learn from it rather than fear it. Colleges and the careers that follow will be scary and daunting. But remember, we've already faced and dealt with so much failure already. We have all come short of the grade we wanted to get in the test or at the end of the semester, and we may not have scored as high on the SAT as we would like after tirelessly working on it with Mr. Chai and Mr. Buto. We have all dealt with not making the team we wanted or getting the starting position we coveted. We have all felt the loneliness of a failed relationship or not being invited to the party we wanted to attend. Yet, despite all of these failures, here we are, as a graduating class who has experienced many successes. How could after all of these failures, we still have experienced so much success? Well, failure makes us better and stronger. Without these setbacks, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't study as hard in the classroom or work as hard on the field. We would not have learned how to be better listeners or friends if we had not felt the pain of damaging a close relationship. If we had not experienced these failures, it would have made the successes we experienced so much less gratifying. That A at the end of the semester would not have felt so good. The league or valley championships that we celebrated with our teams would be that much less memorable. 
through these failures, we have all learned to persevere. The next chapter of our lives will undoubtedly have periods that are much harder than what we have experienced in high school. But think back to the failures we have already overcome and the successes that have followed. Failure is what makes us human and fellow Christians. Experiencing our own failure allows us to show sympathy and empathy toward each other. Understanding how failure makes us feel is why we pick each other and encourage each other when we are down. If it were not for understanding our own struggles and persevering through our own failures, we would be less inclined to champion each other and celebrate each other on our successes. Through failure, God teaches us to remain humble because after every success, there is always that next failure. Failure has and will test our faith, but it will be our, true, it will be our shared values and beliefs that should give us comfort that God has a plan for us all. BCHS is a great example of this Christian and human spirit. We have been so fortunate to be supported by our parents, teachers, and staff who have all invested so much in each and every one of us. I want to thank my parents, my extended family, and all the teachers and staff who have supported me through my failures and given me the tools and support to experience some success. Thank you to the class of 22 for not only supporting me, but for supporting each other. I want to congratulate all of you on your success, but be humble and remember that the next failure is just around the corner. Theodore Roosevelt stated, it is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who actually strives to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best, in the end, the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. So seniors, please do not fear the failure ahead. Embrace the process and remember the lessons you have learned here at BCHS that will allow you to persevere and achieve a lifetime of success. Thank you all for your time. It doesn't take much reading of the news to step away and, and to say, what's the hope in our world? And then we have 11 students who are speaking today. We still haven't heard from Garrett, and he'll wrap things up for us after our students walk across the stage. But I think of students like Sarah and Madison, Sarah Garris and Sarah too, and Fallon and Amon and Georgia and Jillian, Sydney, Michaela, and again, Garrett to come, and class, they're just representative of all 135 of you. You 11 and the others in your class give me so much hope for our future. I look at our leaders, bluntly, in many cases, they're not people that I want to follow. I would follow you, and I'm so proud of you. Great job, speakers. Great job, class. Let's give them a big hand. All right, Mr. Chai, Mr. Scanlon, members of the board, faculty, and guests, I hereby submit that the following students who have met both the graduation requirements from BCHS and also for the state of California are each eligible to receive diplomas as members of the BCHS graduating class of 2022. Congratulations, graduates.
Iman Allison Abimary. Abigail Josephine Aguilar. Dylan Andrew Amos. Georgia D. Anderholt. Jillian Marie and Evan Anthony Apple. Michael Thomas Backer. Sayla Rain Baker. Casey Eli Ballack. Logan Michael Beard. Hunter Kimsey Beckett. Hunter Kimsey Beckett. Logan Riley Berkowitz. Sydney Marie Betancourt. Ben Echeverria Badart. Michaela Echeverria Bedart. <laughs> Reagan Taylor Blaine. Amanda Melissa Blumhoff. Luke Robert Bowman. Caden Marie Bowman. Tyler Karis Ann Braun Yay! 
Adam Nicholas Bunn. Fallon Marie Butcher. Benedito John Joseph Caraccio. Abigail Rose Carr. Sydney Ann Carreri. Eric Cheney. Braden Hunter Chang. Calvin Henry Cheek. Tristy Chajlani. Harrison Henry Clark. Harrison Henry Clark. Coda Christian Cleveland. Evan Dwayne Cloyd. Katie, Katie Rose Cook. Joshua Ryan Cox. Corey Glenn DeBoer. Grant Peter DeBoer. Diana Brooklyn Delgadillo. JC Elizabeth Demos. Nathan Louis Brendan Joseph Donegan
Kelly Nicole Ellis. Amy Michelle Ingle. Amy Michelle Ingle. William Hogue Ingler. Emma Louise Fabri. Adley Scott Falkenberg. Lauren Donnell Fulgham. Mackenzie Cortland Furtado. Sarah Abraham Garris. Brandon Matthew Garcia. John Giamara. Macario Gonzalez. Austin Lou Greenley. Sahil Graywall. Carissa Joanne Gruggett. Savannah Michelle Hanston. Braden Alexander Heath. Ashley Marie Herman. Elijah Seth Hernandez. Christina Page Herrera. Manuel Michael Herrera. Zachary Kyle Hebert. <laughs> a 
Josias Bevan Philip Hogan. Mason Aaron Hoover. <laughs> Jacob Allen Hudson. Ben Thomas Jameson. Aaron Jeffrey Jenkins. Scandra Galeb Judah. Marin Abigail Keys. <laughs> Bailey Edward Keller. Kalia Janae Rosakini Kelly. <laughs> Sihan Kim, she could not be here today. Viviana Celeste Lem. Amanda Lazaro. <laughs> Lois Marie Chavez Lazo. Katana Sally Lester. Jaden Thomas Leindecker. Margaret May Lugo. Jackson Scott Lyons. Jaden Marie McDowell. <laughs> Presley Claire Mahon. <laughs> 
Aiden Connor McGowan. Hannah Elizabeth Meager. Jacob Aaron Near. Jacob Ryan Napolis. <laughs> Dianira Navarra. She could not be here today. Alexis Laney Northway. Allison May Nykamp. Quinton Cole Ocampo. Jason James Parker. <laughs> Caleb Stephen Paul. <laughs> Olivia Claire Penner. Luke Romano Perry. <laughs> Mallory Catherine Ann Phillips. Thomas Hoyt Pickett. <laughs> Madison Lee Porter. Blaze Michael Rader. Aiden William Rand. Andrea Marie Reed. <laughs> Hallie Cameron Rice.
Peyton Ryan. Colin Hunter Rigney. Lily Roach. Alina Joanna Reese. Eric James Schroeder. Sydney Page Shoots. Grace Barbara Schuler. Helen Joy Schuler. Cade Jonathan Schweitzer. Jason Timothy Scruggs. Jacqueline Maylene Cerna. Zachary Thomas Shaneyvelt. Thomas Angus Smith. Justin Brody Spellens. Carson Allen Steele. Garrett Ty Stevenson. <laughs> Peyton Isaac Stewart.
Sarah, two. Mia Nicole Torgiani. <laughs> Kaylee Michelle Touchstone. Kylie Page Toussaint. Jackson Bucky. Ashley Jade Tyree. Anna Catherine Underwood. Braden Ian Van Mayen. <laughs> Matthew Nicholas Velasquez. Andrea Marie Venegas. Braden Waterman. Isaac Nicholas Wells. <laughs> Bailey Marie Ruth Whitfield. <laughs> Ava Catherine Whitaker. Elizabeth Grace Williams. Samuel Logan Wisnoff. <laughs> Makaya Athalia Jafia Woods.
Helena Patrice Zervis. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2022. It's my honor to confer to 2022, Mr. Buto, Mr. Scanlon, with the recommendation of the faculties concerned and by virtue of the authority vested in me by Bakersfield Christian High School, I hereby certify that the following, uh, the preceding graduates have, completing, have completed the course of study prescribed by the Board of Directors of Bakersfield Christian High School and confer upon each of you this diploma with all of its rights, honors, and responsibilities. Congratulations. My name is Gary Stevenson. I'm the senior class president. The turning of the tassel symbolizes one's transition from a student to a graduate. This tradition marks the completion of our journey in high school and represents our next steps beyond the high school. Class of 2022, please join me in turning your tassels from the right to the left. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hey, first, uh, before we close, uh, with our final prayer. Um, parents, first, on behalf of the faculty, BCHS, we want to thank you for the privilege that you've given us in trusting your kids um, with their high school education. We do not take that lightly, so we want to thank you for that. Graduates, let's give your parents a round of applause today, your family. And graduates, I just want to say too, on behalf of the faculty, um, it has been our great privilege and honor to walk with you these last four years. We've been your teachers. We prayed with you. We've celebrated with you. We've, we've cried with you. But most importantly, we want you to know we love you, okay? And uh, if you guys need us, you know where to find us. A couple of announcements real quick before we pray. Um, after the uh, uh, students walk out or graduates walk out, we would just like to ask for all of the graduates to wait outside the sports center, right out here by the grass in front of the sports center. And then we would like to ask all the families to go out after they have uh, walked out to go and find them. So you'll find them there. All right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you praise and honor today. For we acknowledge that it is in you and only you that we live and move and have our being. And as such, we acknowledge that we are not our own, but we belong body and soul to you and you alone. Father, we praise you for the manifold blessings we have in your son, Jesus Christ. May the accomplishments of these graduates that we honor today serve to bring you glory. For every good and perfect gift is from you and through you and ultimately to you. We thank you, Lord for the lives of these graduates and for both your saving grace and common grace that has worked diligently in their lives by way of physical protection, spiritual growth, and the development of life-giving relationships along the way. We thank you, Lord, 
that while their four years of high school was not always what they had planned, by your grace, they navigated difficult days with dignity and purpose, learning that through it all, you and you alone are in control and you are present. We thank you for the families of these students, families who have been diligent and invested in the care and education of these graduates. We thank you for every parent, every grandparent, aunt, uncle, adopted family member who have shared the God-given responsibility and joy of meeting the needs of these graduates. We thank you, Father, that you have given us grace to bring our prayers to you. And now, Lord, we pray for your favor over these graduates, that they would go forth into the world in peace, to live lives of good courage, and in doing so, we pray that they would hold fast to that which is good, rendering to no one evil for evil, but instead seeking to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with you. Father, we pray that by your spirit, you would enable each of them to experience the greatest good, which is to know you in Jesus Christ and live by the gospel. And with this, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all our graduates. Amen. One more time, ladies and gentlemen, families, friends, would you join me in congratulating the Bakersfield Christian High School class of 2022? Let's go!